A linear function is a function of the form f of x is equal to ax plus b, where a and b are constants. whereas x is our variable. Let me give you an example of this. f of x is equal to, let's say, 2x plus 5. So when we say that a and b are constants, we see here that 2 and 5 are the constants. They don't change. They're always 2 and 5. Whereas x is our variable, x can take on any value we want. So for example, we could say that x is, x is maybe 3. In which case our function now becomes 2 times 3 plus 5. So the x varies. We substitute a value in for x. x is our input and f of x is the amount we get when we work out the value of our function. So that's 2 times 3 plus 5 which is 6 plus 5 which is 11. So we have that f of 3 is equal to 11. So our input was 3 and our output is 11. You remember this is our input. And here is our output. So some of the key terms that you need to know are the x in your function is your variable. Now this is a linear function. Here's an example of a linear function. Any function of the form ax plus b is a linear function. And if we plot it, it will be a straight line. That's why it's called a linear function. Now sometimes you're asked to plot a linear function uh, in, in a particular domain. So for example, plot f of x equal to 2x plus 5 in the domain minus 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2, where x is an element of r, the reals. Now what does all this mean? The domain is the set of all possible inputs. So we only need to input numbers between minus 3 and 2. Now x can take any value between minus 3 and 2, so that includes numbers like minus 2.5, minus 2.4, and so on. But in general, in practice, we will only substitute in the whole number values, and um, we can then plot the graph as a line through those whole number values. What does this mean down here? The x is an element of reals it simply means that we can take x to be any real number at all. So uh, uh, real numbers include the fractions, square roots, all of the numbers on the number line. So x can be any of those numbers. That's what this means here, x is an element of reals. So we need to sub in numbers between minus 3 and 2. So let's start with f of minus 3. Minus 3 is my input. I need to substitute it in for x. I need to evaluate the right hand side. So that gives me 2 times minus 3, a plus by a minus gives me a minus, so that's minus 6 plus 5. If I add them together I get minus 1. So that means my input is minus 3 and my output is minus 1. This is our ordered pair which I am going to plot on my xy axis. This is my x-coordinate, and this is my y-coordinate. Next up, 
f of minus 2 because I want to take all the numbers from minus 3 up to 2. So again we substitute minus 2 in for x and we find out what the value of f of minus 2 is. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4 plus 5 gives me 1. So this time my ordered pair is minus 2 is my input and 1 is my output. If we keep going f of minus 1 is 2 times minus 1 plus 5 which is minus 2 plus 5 which is 3 and so minus 1 when I put it in gives me 3 f of 0 is 2 times 0 plus 5 now any number multiplied by 0 is 0 so I just get 5 so 0 is mapped onto 5 f of 1 is 2 times 1 plus 5, which is 2 plus 5, which is 7. So 1 is mapped onto 7. And finally, f of 2, which is the last number in my domain. So 2 times 2 plus 5 means that we get 4 plus 5, which is 9. So when 2 is substituted in, we get 9. So I have all of my ordered pairs and I can now plot my function. Before I draw my axes it's a good idea to see the range that I have. My x-axis I need to go from minus 3 to 2 and my y-axis I need to go from minus 1 is the lowest number and 9 is the tallest. So I want to go from minus 1 to 9 so that means I'll have to make sure that I have uh, bigger numbers on the above the x-axis and I don't need so many below the x-axis. <clears throat> now my first number is minus 3 and minus 1. So let's pick another color here. There's minus 3 and minus 1 is that point there. Then I have minus 2 and 1. So we'll go across to minus 2 and up to 1. And by the way, you always should label your axes x and y. Okay, then we have minus 1 and 3. And these are called tick marks that I'm doing now. Tick marks should be evenly spaced. If you don't have graph paper, you should at least make these evenly spaced. Uh, so we have minus 1 and 3, we have 0 and 5, which is that point there, 1 and 7, so we go across to 1 and up to 7, and let's label some of these. And then 2 and 9, so there's 1, 2, and up as far as 9. So we started with minus 3. Now you, you can also label these points, 2 and 9. I'm just going to label some of them. So there's minus 1 and 3. And our lowest one was, let's say, minus 3 and minus 1. And now I'm going to plot this graph by joining up these dots. So there's my line, I've joined up the points. Now a linear function will always give you a straight line. That's why it's called a linear function. So any function of the form ax plus b will give you a straight line. In practice, we only really need to plot three points. Any three points will do. So these three that I've labeled here would have been sufficient. In fact, two would actually be enough, but it's a good practice to draw three just to make sure that they're in a straight line. Because if I had made a mistake, and I had, say, plotted this point down here with this one up here, and I'd drawn the line, well, by drawing a third point, I'll, I'll know that they're not all in a straight line. So my top tip is 
plot three points for a linear function. You don't need to plot every single point in your domain. Just three points will be sufficient. Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to plot a quadratic function.